Uh, good morning, everyone. We want to acknowledge your presence. Thank you for being here. We want to look at, and as stated in the cover slide, look at the establishment in Jamaica of a policy and regulatory framework for, as noted there, Jamaica's quality ecosystem. Today I want to present, and I have, and will follow the pattern of the following four topics, the context and concerns, Jamaica's qualifications environment, looking briefly at 21st century demands, and then fourth and finally, a proposal with respect to a national qualifications system policy. Now, the Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission was established in 2012 by virtue of recommendations made in the 2004 Education Sector Transformation uh, Report. And uh, we have been established with a mandate for Jamaica's uh, re the regulation, beg your pardon, and oversight of Jamaica's tertiary education system. Uh, that arose in a context when uh, Jamaica was experiencing significant growth in its tertiary education sector in terms of the numbers of institutions that were entering the expansion of program offerings across all institutional types, particularly with respect to the public education institutions. And there was a felt need to establish this regulatory environment that would speak to, one, the institutions, the extent to which institutions would be, um, would be required to register, to satisfy certain standards in order to be registered, so as to control, and I use the term advisedly, but control from the perspective of ensuring quality outcomes in the sector. One other dimension of his regulatory activity outside of institutions has to do with qualifications. And so very early, one of the things that it was mandated to do was to develop and implement a national qualifications framework. That was achieved in February 2017. And subsequent to that, we have extended significant resources, engaging institutions, critical partners such as the HART NSTA, and the main um, tertiary education institutions have all patterned their programs in, in alignment with the standards of the National Qualifications Framework of Jamaica. However, one of the things that was missing at that early stage was the policy um, framework or policy regime. And so one of the things that we did not have at that instance was not only was there a gap in terms of the policy framework for qualifications, but also what was the, the tertiary sector going to be? So whilst it was that action was being taken to develop and define legislation for the commission, but there was a need for a policy for the overall tertiary sector and as well for the qualifications. So when it is that we speak today in terms of uh, recommendations for a policy and regulatory framework, one of the things that we want to do in looking at the context is to address a number of concerns as they presently exist. So the critical issue for us has to do with the low percentage of the population with qualifications. And when it is that I speak about the population, I want us to note that we're speaking about the 14 plus 15, age 15 and above in terms of the workers age segment of the population. At the OECD, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, and Jamaica has aligned itself in terms of its assessment analysis of the data with this definition. Employed people are defined as those aged 15 and over who report that they have worked in gainful employment for at least one hour in the previous week, or who had a job but were absent from work during the reference week while having a formal job attachment. This is critical. So it's between the eight anything or any worker, whatever they are doing, but as and with the conditions listed, but minimum of 14 plus 15 and above. And so this is the workers age segment of the population. And so all the data that I present today is with respect to this um, group of persons. And so when we look at, at this group of persons, what are we seeing? Utilizing the Jamaica Survey of Living Conditions 2019 data, 
And now let me say, and I do know and I have seen the data for 2020, but I am not at liberty to share that. The PIOJ will release, it, it, the Planning Institute of Jamaica will release, you know, having it, once it has been um, cleaned, um, assure, finally quality assured, approved by cabinet, etc., it will be released. Uh, it does show some significant improvements in the, in the data, but let us go in keeping with the 2019 outcomes. Eh? So for the general population, what we find is that 39% of persons um, indicate that they are certified, all right? 39% of persons. Uh, females show a, a higher uh, ratio of, of, of certification with 45.5%, as opposed to males at 32.4%. Within, as would be expected, the urban centers, a greater proportion of the population has certification. 47.5% uh, in the Greater Kingston metropolitan area. So in terms of the urban centers, the data indicates greater percentage of individuals as opposed to the rural, which is roughly 32%. Next slide now. Within the, as we look now at the age groups, those who are in the younger cohort, uh, 20 to 24, higher percentage of certification rates, and then it would be obvious that the, those at the oldest would have less percentage given that a number of factors. The poorest would be at 23 0.1%. Okay, so th this then is just overall in terms of the rates of certification, and we need to note these, they will be significant. So now when we look at the prime working age population, what we are seeing is approximately 35% of Jamaicans within the prime working age population, 25 and 54, hold qualifications of any sort. Now, the, what we are seeing is that when we look at the, the traditional qualifications, the CXCs, uh, basic, uh, CXC general, etc., tertiary, and so on, the indications are that the, the very low numbers of persons hold these formal qualifications. What we want to do now is to have a discussion as to the qualifications environment in terms of the types, etc. Next slide, please. The data reveal that when 4.1% of persons have CSEC basic uh, Jamaica secondary school certificate um, exam, secondary school certificate, uh, these are older types, not so ac accessed at this particular point in times in terms of the frequency. Um, CSEC general GCEO level 12.4%, uh, CAPE roughly across both units 1.2%. And so this essentially would be the data that we want to share with respect to the types, these traditional types. Next slide, please. As, as we move on, the city and guilds qualifications recently introduced at less than half, 0.5%. NVQ level 1, 2.6%. NVQ level 2, 3% of persons indicate that they hold. A level 3 and 4 in terms of their associate degrees, 3.6% of individuals indicate that they are certified at this level. Uh, first degree, le NVQ level 5, 3%. And then as you go on, roughly the same percentage uh, in, so overall, 39% of individuals within the prime working age population cohort indicate that they are, um, qual have qualifications of some kind or the other. We see some biases within the data in terms of a, an emphasis on the acceptance recognition of external certifications, such as your, those offered by CXC, uh, GCE type exams, uh, CSEC to certainly to validate the local high school diploma developed through Hart VTDI, uh, city and guilds exams, and then now towards qualifications that facilitate global portability and mobility, in the, the migra migration thrust. So your NVQ, J's, CVQs, Red Seal certification, and so on. It's essentially, this just affirms the fact of our people uh, and the migratory um, tendencies. I uh, can, can skip this slide, I'm gonna come back to that. All right, so go, go down. So the next thing that we want to do is, and we appreciate as TVET practitioners, persons within the ter tertiary education space, the, the demands. Recently, the Organization of American States sponsored a workshop, a hybrid, uh, both in person and face-to-face, -face, addressing the, the, the need 
for enhanced cooperation between the ministries of labor and education and then the various agencies associated with either portfolio in order to enhance uh, the performance of, of the nations with respect to the training, development, and certification of youth in particular, but then across the entire spectrum uh, of the prime working age population. Uh, the OECD certainly notes the labor market relevance, and then now linking this in terms of the outcomes of the higher education systems. Three questions are asked, you know, what skills are relevant to the labor market? Uh, how well does higher education generate skills that meet labor market needs? And what can policymakers do to help higher education systems meet labor market needs requirements? Uh, we had within that presentation, and this was in May 4 and 5, we had representatives f from the Ministry of Education, uh, from Hart NSTA, um, and Dr. Marcia Romande was, was the presenter speaking to Hart NSTA and its program of activities, and then myself from JTEC now just looking at the overall but particular emphasis on the national qualifications framework of Jamaica. And so we, we were able to share the extent to which TVET is being in, has been integrated and, the, and its importance, and then the new strategies and the thrust being advanced by Hart NSTA as it seeks to ensure human capital development, training, and satisfying the needs and requirements of the labor market. And certainly we note and understand in terms of the needs and requirements as we continue the transformation in, the, in our societies in order to satisfy the needs of the workplace. We have, are moving from industrial base to service base with an emphasis on trades and vocations and certainly we note that um, we have been seeing some discussion continuing the impact of chat gpt ai uh, and the extent to which these or how much will these impact the labor market what to what extent will they for example in jamaica in terms of one of our major industries the knowledge base outsource knowledge uh, processing industries etc uh, these service centers so the extent to which ChatGPT and other AI type um, um, the technologies will impact and how significantly will they impact. And so the extent to which learning and innovation skills, digital literacy skills, career and life skills um, are emphasized in the curricula and critically certified. All of this is important with respect to an understanding and the proposal for this national qualification system policy. <laughs> Okay, the fast track to new skills, um, the World Bank executed a study and one of the things that they did was to establish that one, all nations with respect to development of appropriate policy and regulatory framework to focus on financing and then critically the provision of appropriate information to stakeholders to be able to define their career choices. And certainly for us here at JTEC, we are looking to apply the lessons learned from that study. So how do we, in, in acknowledging the challenges with how the qualifications environment is framed, with its emphasis on, on the traditional, traditionally recognized qualifications at the expense of the newer ones, um, although and albeit the increased acceptance of the NVQs and CVQs. One of the things that we emphasize here is that the, there is this critical need for the development of a formal policy to be able to improve quality access, to establish linkages, the integration of qualifications that are non-traditional and ensure public and labor market recognition within the country and the region. There are a number of policy statements that we will guide us as we move forward. We have drafted and sent this proposal and it's presently being reviewed through the government in terms of the, the, the legal stakeholders such as the Attorney General's Chambers and as well the Ministry of Finance and the, and the Public um, Services. Policy statements that would be highlighted in this new framework would be to establish an infrastructure and governance framework. This is absolutely important. We recognize that without this, the national qualifications framework, we, we need that. Um, flexible learning pathway is gonna be critical in terms of understanding that not only do we have the traditional ac academic infrastructure, but also we have to have 
aligned with the international qualifications framework and then the provision of legal and policy safeguards so that individuals can utilize their learning as certified to be able to advance academically. And this is important. There is a need to, for credit accumulation formally and transfer. We hear all kinds of um, challenges associated with persons who, in having received TVET qualifications, are not able to access appropriately utilizing what they have um, cert as certified qualifications utilizing that to be able to be accepted in programs and to continue their development. Next one. We also want to emphasize, in keeping with what I just said there, the whole matter of the standards that relate to equity, access, transparency, and integrity in the qualifications portability processes. Now, one of the things here in Jamaica is that the, the, we invest billions, and this is throughout the Caribbean, in terms of our the teaching and learning that just goes on on a day-to-day -day basis within the school system. However, none of that is actually recorded nor goes to qualifications, all right? Uh, what we are arguing right now is that th there is the proposal for a national school leaving certificate, and we think that that should not only speak in terms of a record for activities and the, um, your records, your GC, and so on, but also that those grades should be incorporated and ultimately that certificate accredited so that individuals do not lose what they have gained through the system. And so this has been accepted in principle and we are awaiting the outcome of the review in terms of the formal policy process. Thank you. All right.